all my friends. How you doing out there? Hope everything is going well with you. Today is the day that the uh, we have the um, uh, electoral college vote, and uh, oh, just said a Russian ambassador to Turkey was shot. Okay, great. Um, oh boy, just. A few comments before I get started in the book of Ruth today. Uh, if you can uh, take a look at Stephen Ben um channel, uh, The New World Order, Rome's Millennial Plan. It's a good um, uh, website to look at, you know, and he's, it's one of his better ones uh, that he kind of ties a few things together uh, about uh, what he he sees as going on biblically and uh, what's happening with the Vatican and and the Pope and how they're going to usher in um, uh, you know this great deception. Now a lot of people have different ideas about what is the great deception, uh, and. Um, you know, some people say, you know, it's the alien UFO thing. Well, I, I happen to think it is because um, of what we've known about the Nazis and uh, all the uh, knowledge that they gained down in Antarctica. Uh, you can read about uh, Project Paperclip with uh, Admiral Byrd and his encounter with the so-called aliens. I call them the, the Watchers. Uh, I mean... I think they're at that time they're disembodied spirits in some sort of hybrid bodies of some some form, um, and there's just still so much that we don't know. So I'm just kind of, you know, gathering all these bits and pieces and trying to put it together with the help of the Lord. And um, in the meantime, uh, they were you know coming up with all kinds of uh, technical. Uh, knowledge that we we didn't even have if if they would have if we would have not come up with the atom bomb uh, I believe that the Germans with the knowledge that they were given could have easily won the war um, I'm not the only one that that felt that way the Bushes felt that way uh, Roosevelt felt that way a lot of people actually you know felt that way um, and so God had a, diff a different plan, obviously. Uh, now, one thing I just want to say about God and our relationship, a lot of you oftentimes come up with the uh, fact of, you know, why does God allow murder? Why does God allow these horrendous, you know, terrible things to happen in the world? And leading scholars have come up with this and have even left the church because of this question. Um, now, my my answer may be simplistic um, for you. I don't know, but I do know that the Lord does give us free will. And to have a relationship, a healthy relationship with anyone, you have to allow the person to have their own free will, okay? Um, to do and to be who they are. You cannot force yourself on somebody and tell them how to be and what to do and to abuse and to um, be hurtful uh, mentally or physically and call that a relationship. That's not a relationship, that's a dictatorship, okay? Um, that's like being kidnapped, <laughs> okay? Uh, you, you don't have free will. So the Lord, our Father in heaven, has the power to stop all of this. But then again, that's a dictatorship. That's not free will. He will come back. He will come down again because if he doesn't, there's not going to be any flesh left. Okay, that's what he says in the Bible. That if the days weren't shortened, there would be no flesh left. So he is going to come back again. He is going to redeem us uh, and take the remnant home with him. And um, those of us who are dead in Christ will rise first and meet him in the air and, um, and so forth. So um, you, uh, God does love us and he wants the best for us. That's why he gave us the Ten Commandments. If you follow the first two rules, the rest will follow. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength 
love your neighbor as you love yourself, okay? So if you follow those rules, you won't lie, steal, cheat, and murder, okay? And what we have to do, each of us, our own little part, is to educate the world that it is not okay to have Sharia law, okay? It is not okay to mutilate women. It's not okay to brutalize and rape them. It's not okay to do that to older people. It's not okay to do that to people who don't believe the same way you do, okay? And by the way, what you believe in is satanic, and here's why. <laughs> you know, uh, you gotta get some cojones and, sp and speak the truth. Because you, we cannot be silent anymore as Christians. We have to speak out for our Lord and for our beliefs. And we have to be Christian soldiers. Okay? All right. So let's get on with the Bible. Uh, <clears throat> All right. So we're in the book of Ruth. And this is uh, Ruth gleans in the fields of Boaz. Uh, he takes knowledge of her, Boaz does, and he shows her some favor, okay? So, and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, okay? And uh, this m must have been her husband's cousin or, or some relative, okay? And um, the family of Elamek, sorry, Elam, Elam Elek. And his name was Boaz. The Ruth of the Moabites said unto Naomi, Let me know, let me now go to the field, and I'll glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz who was of the kindred of Elam Elek. And so, you know, what would happen is people would go out to the field, they'd gather in all of the wheat, and then whatever was left, that was, that was called gleaning. So she took up the scraps of, 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 of people that were taking, you know, their portion. And um, Behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him back, saying, The Lord bless thee. And then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Who, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And... She said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued from evening, from the morning until now, and she's tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. So don't don't go to this field and that field. You just you could just stay here in my field and and, and get what you need. <clears throat> Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. I have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee, and thou art a thirst, so go to the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shalt take knowledge of me, seeing that I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto my, thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knowest not here foretold. And the Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me, 
and thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaiden, that I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens? And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and she reached her parched corn, and did eat, and was sufficed, and left. When she would risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not, and let her fall also some of the handfuls on purpose for her leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not so she gleaned in the field until eve and beat out what had been gleaned and it was about an ipith of barley and she took it up and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw that she had gleaned and she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed and their mother-in-law said unto her where hast thou gleaned today where wroughtest thou blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee and she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought and said the man's name with whom i had wrought to this day is boaz and naomi said unto her daughter-in-law blessed be he of the lord who hath not left out kindness of the living and to the dead? Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth the Moabitess said uh, unto me, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my har harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou goest Sorry, it is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean into the end of the barley harvest and of a wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. Okay, I'm going to stop there and we'll continue with chapter 3 uh, at another time. But see how just saying one good word uh, just gives you hope and joy and love. We can do so much by just being kind to each other and being thoughtful and loving. Love God with all your heart and soul and might. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Goes a long way. Okay, have a good week and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.